الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين صدق الله العظيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته آمين جزاك الله خير إمام في هذا بيرفل دعاء So inshallah uh, we'll start uh, the meeting uh, as you can see here the agenda it's uh, Uh, we're going to very shortly ask each candidate to uh, spend, uh, you know, about three minutes uh, uh, explaining to us uh, why they want to join uh, the board, uh, what they bring to the board, uh, and uh, how they can uh, continue serving ISCJ. Uh, just to give you an update, uh, the Board of Trustees, every year we have an election. Uh, three candidates uh, are rotated every year to join the Board of Trustees and two for the Board of Overseers. And uh, as for the Board of Overseers, we have three uh, members in the Board of Overseers. The candidate that gets the maximum vote uh, will uh, stay for two years, while the other two candidates, their term is for uh, one year. In the Board of Trustees, uh, each candidate's uh, term is for three years. So I'm going to start uh, uh, calling out the candidates in alphabetic order to spend about three minutes uh, introducing themselves, uh, talking about uh, you know, basically what they bring, their family and everything and how they can benefit ICG and everybody else, including Muslims and non-Muslims by working, participating here. So I'm going to start first with uh, Brother Asad. Uh, can you please, uh, um, you know, unmute yourself and tell us something about yourself? Assalamu alaikum. Okay, first of all, I want to thank um, the, our overseer for arranging this meeting, the candidate and the audience for tuning in now live and later on demand. Um, most, yes, uh, as you all know, you know, we didn't allow Ramadan Tarabi prayer due to COVID last year. And um, this year, uh, we appreciated that uh, because of the task force that was assembled, uh, and the uh, volunteers that are working uh, for Fridays and Taraweeh time, you know, make, allow this or make this happen. And I, and I thank Allah and the, you know, our community for giving the opportunity also to be part of this volunteer task. Um, this is, a, to me, ISCJ is, uh, is near and dear to me uh, 15 years and Whenever anybody of my friends or colleague in, in our community, you know, ask me for any volunteer effort in the majid, I always effort to, to participate in this and help out. That's basically it. And if given opportunity, I like to continue serving the community. Uh, Asad Salam, so can you tell us about uh, your family? I know, Asad, uh, you have been involved in many committees. Uh, you're still involved. Uh, so can you mention some of the committees you're working with and something about your family, how many kids you have and stuff like that? <laughs> We'd love to hear that. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, like many committees, right, I've been part of. Uh, Let's, let's start with like the, the love of our chairman currently in the weekend school community and also uh, social service committee. Last year, you know, we didn't really utilize because of the restriction of, uh, you know, COVID, but I'm glad I was part of it and we were able to serve the community during Ramadan and you know, matrimonial events and eat events and other functions. And we also, we have a CAP community, which is very helpful for people to getting their skills in the set and to enhance their career. Is uh, Ali Bakhtiar is actually currently chairman, and I'm also part of it. 
and we arranged a lot of program for our community to get skilled and better service providing for our community. So they feel that, you know, I is part of the ISDJ and, you know, serving them and, and they are, you know, getting connected with us. EFG is another one for the Majid expansion, you know, for the funding for the, op, you know, for the operation is ongoing task, you know, the operation task and the Majid expansions. And I'm part of that Alhamdulillah also with uh, currently Arif Khan and Khalid Astafi is, is uh, leading this effort and I'm also volunteering there and helping them out. Actually, I just want to also take this opportunity to, to thanks, you know, the, first of all, the, the task was created, you know, from the, I think there was a special uh, BOD meeting, the task was created to open the masjid and uh, Vasir Rahman chaired it and, and he worked really hard on it. And I think Arif Khan, Mohammed, Ashraf, Ar Arif Patel, Saud Rahman, the doctor, Umar Qadir, attorney, Abib Asan, Khali Asafi, and my sister Sana Asafi, they really made this happen. That this year, Alhamdulillah, you know, Ramadan, we were able to pray inside and outside the masjid. And, you know, they created guidelines for us and help out in this process of opening the masjid. You know, our community, I know, was very despair by that we were not allowed to pray last last year in the Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, to these people's effort, we were able to open the budget and start serving the community. And I guess one other thing, I guess, continuing on that, sorry. You know, we also need a lot of volunteers um, for the fright, for the Jummah prayer. A lot of other volunteers, you know, I guess dedicated volunteer we have, uh, Mamad Ashik from here, you know, uh, Arif Khan is everywhere also. <laughs> Arif Khan, Arif Patel, you know, Abdul Khalil, uh, uh, Dilawar also. Dilawar actually helping us a lot with the second floor opening. When we started opening second floor, Dilawar basically led the operator. He came himself to help out. I will take care of second floor. And always they are dedicated, mashallah. Um, just for this community spirit, people love to volunteer, help out, you know, a lot of time they are giving to this community. And because of this, you know, our community is really, you know, it's, it's, it's probably, our, I think in our area, a lot of people from I heard a lot of far away and I love this community because of that. So I said, um... Before the imam picks on you, you know, you have the, behind you, you have your family supporting you, doing all this good work. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you have, uh, what, two daughters and a son, I believe? Mm, no, yes, correct. You know, my wife is always, of, of course, without the wife supporting, nothing is possible. So I mentioned my wife. My wife, Alhamdulillah, is very supportive for her. Um, I have two. I have two daughters, Asia and Amna, and one son, Abdullah. And they, you know, when I was, when I came to America, I went to Sunday school and that's how I really got connected to the masjid and to, uh, you know, that's how I really enjoyed it. And I made sure my also kids, they went to the, have connection with the masjid. And from kindergarten on, but all my three kids is going to the weekend school, weekend ISC Islamic school. And my, my daughter loved it here, and she also is currently the assistant. She's in 11th grade now, alhamdulillah. And she's the assistant teacher in the weekend school. And the weekend school and, you know, Noor Rahman is, is great for building our youth, you know, and getting connected to the, to our, you know, connected to the community, to the Islam. And this is really great. And they make good friends here. And a lot of friends that they had there, for my, I know from my kids, you know, from the weekend school, they still hang out with them, they also always connected with them and this is really good for them. I think youth itself, you know, if they're connected, it's probably better if they're Islamic oriented. And, you know, and, and Hatim actually leading another great effort about youth programs. I think he was, he would let us know, but he did a great job there too. And he's also a very good friend of mine. Like I said, for Just, introducing himself. Yes, sorry. With Hatim, I remember when uh, we worked at, uh, we used to have a, a, a takaf program in Majid for the youth. I really, really missed them, you know. Uh, the Habib, uh, Habib uh, used to lead it, and Hatim actually led it with, with Ahmed, you know, having a great program he set up with them. 
And I remember we used to stay all night in the masjid with the youth and we did great programs there. And Arif Patel always there, you know, he made, I think, Jeopardy program that was really hit. And this thing I think is missing, I think we should add somehow, add this back. I think I really, I think I know my, my kids always mentioned that, that golden time that they had. And it was amazing. I remember like it was Fajr time and the, everybody was from from all night they were awake and Fajr time they were super, super excited. You know, because they knew that they're going to be leaving soon. There was vibrant in the air. Thank you, Asad. Uh, when it comes, we we'll ask Hatim when he's sent to talk whether he can set up a virtual hit the calf this time. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not me right now, COVID, but hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. So uh, uh, I'll call the next candidate, Brother Abbas uh, Sheikh. Uh, he's a veteran at ICJ. Um, he's currently the treasurer, uh, very busy with the, all the accounts. Uh, so, Brother Abbas Sheikh, can you please? Um, Tell us about yourself. Uh, I know you've done a lot for ICJ. Inshallah. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, professionally, I am an accountant uh, auditor. I worked uh, all my life uh, uh, in accounting. Uh, Basically, in the United States, I have been for over 40 years, and out of 42 years, I worked 40 years with my two employers. Alhamdulillah, I created a very good trust, and uh, I work uh, very proudly in both corporation. Uh, the last corporation where I was working as a financial controller, I just recently retired three weeks before. I decided uh, that I can spend more time with my grandchildren, with uh, community, and if I can do more ibadah for all those kind of reasons, I decided uh, retirement. Otherwise, my company won't let me go, and they say that you can work as long as you want to work. Alhamdulillah, I have a good experience in accounting. Uh, uh, and that's the thing I want to help, uh, if I can, to the masjid. Uh, so far, uh, with this organization, I have been member of more than 25 years. The time I joined the, the ISCJ, late 90s, uh, I became a part of internal audit committee right away. Then uh, I worked for 15 years for weekend school, registering children, involving all day-to-day, -day, like uh, the programming and everything. And then I joined uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, the time I joined, I became a treasurer. So I served three terms for the, as a treasurer. One or two times I was called, uh, I was nominated for one or two years. For one year, I was nominated for as an overseer also. So I have a multiple kind of things and I know what uh, the requirement and what uh, uh, the time you have to put in this kind of thing when you take the responsibility. Actually, I'm very thankful that people, some brother and sisters nominated me and I didn't want to upset them. And therefore, I would like to continue uh, to serve uh, to the ISCJ. So that was one of the prime reason I am just joining the board again uh, this time. But I really request whole community that please, whoever has uh, accounting background, we have been telling all the time, but nobody is coming uh, forward to run the election. And I want to give the responsibility to the younger generation. That they are more energetic. They have a more knowledge than all of us. We have experience, but we can pass that torch to the young generation. And I want to really train them also in case if somebody can come in the future and uh, I can help them and they can take over uh, these kind of things. Uh, I have been blessed uh, that the time I joined, I, I, it is an immense uh, 
I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I stayed near the masjid. And what are the advantages of masjid? I cannot describe even. Uh, my children from kindergarten to 12th grade, whatever we have the weekend school, they joined. Alhamdulillah, they were the one of the best students. They memorized all my three children, the Jews are 30. They got one $1,000 prize and they all three became, uh, uh, alhamdulillah, the teacher, substitute teacher and teacher. So they have a very good uh, Islamic background. And in dunya we life also, mashallah, my all three children became a, uh, medical doctors. And I have been blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I want to tell you that if you connected with the masjid and day-to-day -day programming and everything, how benefited to you and to your family, it's like a undescribable. So that is the second thing. The third thing I want to mention that as a treasurer, I did a lot of uh, make it easy, like a transparent, people can read the report, uh, make it easy, all those kind of things I change in the department. Now the accounting department is running very smooth. I can tell you very honestly that it is a very one of the best staff and the best way the accounting department is going. Our records are very transparent and everything. Uh, internal audit committee has suggested uh, many, many their remarks and their suggestion we are trying to implement, like they say, that all the different bank accounts uh, for Sadaka and charity is separate, for endowment is separate, for uh, a general fund is separate. We did all those kind of things. We clean up all the pledges and everything, like in 2011, and all these people have carrying the name. We clean it up, all those kind of things. Now it shows the pledges are the current all the CPA from the outside, they don't have any kind of our balance and everything. So we become a more transparent and our transaction and everything is very clean and everything, but still there are room for improvements. There are account, particularly some computer side, some backing up and some cloud and everything they were suggesting, which we did not do any kind of thing. And in the future, if I have a time, I want to learn myself also, as well as I want to create some kind of people who has a computer knowledge and they can come and help out in accounting, as well as I want to train our staff since I have a little bit more time now so that they can become independent. They don't have to rely to other people. So those are my ideas kind of thing. And that is the reason I would like to just for the sake of Allah with very humble person, with honesty as a very detail-oriented person. Those are my qualities and that quality I want to put uh, to help uh, in accounting department as well as uh, all other things like uh, it's, we have a big infrastructure coming out. We have a senior citizen uh, housing we are building. We are building the sports facility. There's a lot of accounting involved. What kind of uh, uh, system we have to do, how the finance, of course, the fundraising and everything, different thing, but to accounting also properly and to understand and everything. So if I can help those kind of background, uh, I am ready to help and Allah give me the good health and uh, prosperous life so that I can do as much as I can do for the sake of Allah. I can't hear. Yeah, uh, so just a note, we will, uh, anyone who have questions, uh, they can type it in the chat. Uh, we will get to the questions once all the introduction is done. Uh, just uh, request all the candidates to keep your uh, um, introduction under uh, five minutes so we can get everyone and then we'll come back with the questions. Brother Hatim, uh, please go ahead. Assalamualaikum, can you hear me? We can hear you, Walaikum Salaam. Assalamualaikum, Rahm, Alhamdulillah, Wa Salaam, Wa Rasulullah. Well, Jazakum Allah here for this uh, amazing opportunity. Uh, it's really a blessing. 
uh, to run for any um, Islamic um, board and to have an opportunity to um, first of all, serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as serve the community um, the person is within. So uh, my name is Hatem Gawali. Um, I'm happily married for the past 18 years, alhamdulillah. Blessed with three children. Um, I have Omar, uh, who is 18, uh, Ali, who is 16, and Alia, the sweetest of all, she is seven. Um, I moved to um, South Brunswick in 2014. Um, and ever since I moved, I became a, a member of ISCJ. Uh, one of the main reasons I moved um, in central Jersey is to be very close to um, to uh, a center or a sonic center. And that was ISCJ. I used to be in Long Island for the past, for, before moving to uh, South Brunswick. Um, so I used to be there for about, I don't know, 15, 16 years, and it took me about 20 minutes to go to the masjid. So being exactly three minutes away from the masjid is a huge blessing. And as Brother Abbas mentioned, um, just having this connection, that having the masjid as a second home is an undescribable feeling. Um, and, and this relationship with the masjid um, you know, one is critical for one's own personal spiritual uh, needs, um, but it's got to be the second home. I mean, so I consider ISJ as my second home. So ever since I came in, um, I just, um, you know, one, wanted to know the community more. And secondly, wanted to, uh, to be engaged as I've been for the past 20 years, as I mentioned in my bio, um, I've been in numerous boards. Um, I've been affiliated with a number of organizations. Uh, or organizations, I should say. Uh, Muslim American Society been there. I've been in their board of trustees, um, board of directors. Um, I've been the chairperson for um, a couple of sub chapters, Queens and Long Island. Um, um, so it's a national organization, um, and um, I, you know we've been. I've been serving uh, wherever I can uh, at any point. Um, you know, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I moved to Central Jersey, I wanted to continue to be engaged at a local level um, while I'm still engaged with Mass and Oak Tree Institute and CARE at a national level. Um, so Ping Dair Patel and the thing that interests me at the time is the bylaws committee. And I told Dair that I'm going to join the bylaws committee. And, you know, after going back and forth, we said, you know, let's focus on the youth, and um, and and that's always my my focus area, right? Um, same thing with Mass and Oak Tree Institute, and we can speak in detail about that. Um, but how can how can you make the youth attracted to the Masjid uh, or to the Islamic Center, I should say? Um, because lecturing um, and just prayers are not going to cut it. It's not going to make the youth attracted to the center and you know, being there every single minute. Um, it's gotta be more than that. It is critical, uh, but it's just not enough. And we've seen that in many, many centers that we we built around the nation, right? Uh, being part of Mass. So we looked at very, very closely at um, um, the, if, you, if, if you're familiar with the Bath Avenue Mass Youth Center where it has about four or five floors and you, um, you have to create, um, you know, uh, some sort of connection with sports and that's what attracts um, the youth uh, very much. Um, so things like that. Um, so again, we can speak into detail about that, but anyway, so when I came to IRF and, and we felt that there is a need to help out with the youth committee. Um, so we started that um, in, I think it was 2015, something like that. But shortly after, we wanted to create some rigor and structure around um, the youth committee at ISCJ. And at that point, we started to look for, we decided to hire um, a resident scholar or, an, or, or a resident director. Um, and that's when we started the process of looking for candidates and we started officially the youth committee and we branded it with LIT. Alhamdulillah, um, it, it's one of the most successful committees at ISCJ. We have, as of 2020, we, uh, we rank consistently about 35, 36 programs. Things have been established from scratch, like the 
again, going back to that youth, uh, to the sports element, um, you know, the skiing trip attracts more than 50 to 75 uh, individuals every year. Um, and we started to integrate with the Quran Academy. We wanted to integrate and collaborate with the weekend school that didn't um, work in full force, but that's definitely on the roadmap. So anyway, um, get engaged with the lead committee. And Alhamdulillah, it was uh, beautiful with Dr. Ahmed um, spearheading this um, with consistent programs across different tracks, as you're aware. Um, so I was the chair of that committee. Um, and then uh, working right now with Sister Saima, um, who is chairing that committee at, 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 this, uh, at this point, and working with a number of individuals, um, such as um, Arif, of course, and Asad, whom I typically call the mayor of South Brunswick. Um, and, um, you know, collaborating with other committees, um, Brother Delaware, for example, with social uh, and a bunch of other committees. So, um, so that's a bit about myself, moving to South Brunswick 2014, getting engaged mainly with the LIC committee. Um, I have a ton of experiences, Alhamdulillah of Lahmi, it's a blessing again, at a national level and at, um, at a local level, um, working mainly with uh, large national organizations to establish uh, programs from scratch, um, things like Muslim Day on Capitol Hill and organizing this whole thing with CARE, um, PACE, you know, the, the, um, PACE, which is an organization reading that. So that's, you know, that was also, I was also a part of that when I was, at the executive level on uh, uh, for the Muslim American Society. So anyway, um, so I think um, that uh, these, so I just wanna use these experiences wherever I can, whether that's on a position or not, to kind of serve my own community over here at the local level, uh, specifically ISCG and all the surrounding centers as well. Um, um, so that's, um, that's why I got interested, obviously what interested me the most is the sports facility, because as I mentioned, it is one of the key reasons if you wanna attract the youth and make them um, consistently coming uh, to ISCJ. Um, so that's definitely one of my biggest um, um, interests. Um, and I think I'm, at a professional level, I've been always in the financial technology. So um, mainly on the product management side, so I'm currently uh, working with the London Stock Exchange. It used to be Refinitiv and we used to be Thomson Financial. Thomson Financial purchased, purchased Reuters and we became Thomson Reuters, but the financial organization um, spun off and now we became London Stock Exchange. Um, so been with the company for about 13 years. Before that was with a couple other companies, Computer Associates, as well as Mobius, mainly on the security side, again, technology. Um, it's my hobby and it's my professional life. So can't ask for more, alhamdulillah, it's a blessing. Um, so that's all I have, if you have any questions for me. And um, I feel blessed um, to be working with a number of active and committed and sincere um, brothers and sisters at ISCJ um, at, all, at, at many levels. And I'm blessed to, to be running um, and I'll be taking any questions, inshallah. You're on mute, Brother Arif. Brother Arif, you're on mute. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Brother Madas, please go ahead, tell us uh, what uh, you bring to the board, uh, uh, what I would say skills and qualities you bring to the board that can help them uh, achieve their work. Um, I think you're on mute, let me ask a mute. Yep, um, go ahead. Brother Arif, are you talking to me, Malaz? Yes, yes. So, so I'm everyone, I'll try Okay. Uh, sure. uh, just a reminder to everyone to, if you have any questions for the candidate, please start typing them in, in, in the Zoom chat. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead, Brother Munaz. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'll, I'll try to keep it short. So um, I'll, I'll start. My, uh, my name is Malad Abu Tarif. Um, I am, subhanAllah, when I hear people that have been in the community for 40, 45 years, I am 46 years old. So um, it, it's probably older than I, I, I was born. So um, alhamdulillah. I, um, on a personal level, um, I'm a husband. I've been married for, um, hold on before my wife um, kills me. Um, 
since 2004, somebody did the, did the math for 17 years. I have four kids, um, Tala, who's 13, and then we have triplets who are um, coming about nine years old, uh, Amal, Lama, and Ahmed. All of them have been part of the uh, weekend school. I've been in the central New Jersey area for um, about 20 years now. Um, and 11 years ago, we decided that being in North Brunswick was too far from the message, so we moved to South Brunswick uh, about 11 years ago. Uh, we're about five minutes away from the message, alhamdulillah. Um, on a professional level, um, I have a pharmacy degree, and then I moved into the U.S., uh, did my Ph.D., and then um, uh, started my career as a scientist. And while, doing, while being a scientist, I, did a, um, I, I uh, obtained a management degree, an MBA, uh, as uh, as a part time, uh, I grew up in a scientific ladder in in uh, all in the central New Jersey area, um, and became um, a leader of a therapeutic area, functional uh, therapeutic area, doing clinical pharmacology, clinical research, um, and now I'm overseeing uh, my current role. Four years ago, my old manager at Bristol Myers Squibb retired, moved to Daiichi Sankyo, and uh, recruited me into Daiichi Sankyo uh, to build a group um, from the ground up. Um, at Daiichi Sankyo, and, and I've been now for, for four years in, in the company. That is Sorry. Um, so um, that's at a, at a professional level. Um, I have both scientific, clinical research, and managerial roles. Uh, my current role is executive director, uh, as I said, leading the clinical pharmacology for the oncology therapeutic area uh, in the company. Um, involvement with, uh, with um, ISCJ, I remember when I first moved from Brooklyn, uh, New York to here, um, I did a, a quick search about Islamic societies. I came into ISCJ. Um, I was in Somerset at that time. Um, I met uh, Imam Shibli. Uh, I asked him about if he knew any um, Islamic societies that are close to Somerset um, at that time. And he said, just come to ISCJ. Um, so I'm like, but yeah, Brother Shibli, I, about 25, 30 minutes away. Can I want to do the daily prayers? Can is there anything closer? You just just come to ICJ. Uh, so we, um, I continued to come into ICJ, and and then we moved to North Brunswick, so we're closer. And as I mentioned, about 11 years ago, I um, we moved to South Brunswick, to the South Brunswick area. Um, why am I running? Uh, there is one selfish part: is I want to show my kids that you need to be part of the community and uh, and and give back. Um, and um, uh, two things if, if we can accomplish within the ISCJ is the attitude of uh, we want to do the best quality um, services to, other, to the community. Um, it's no longer just providing services, it is the best quality services. We want Neural Iman to be the best school, Islamic school in the, in, in, in the country. We want best youth activities. Uh, so that, that um, attitude of us that we want to provide the best quality best services to the community and two is sustainability um, how can we make icj uh, financially sustainable how it can uh, um, be independent on the long run and and can we focus on those two active two things um, from from a, 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 an overall perspective vision stand, standpoint and i know there's a lot that was done um, from involvement with icj activities um, i was involved in been involved with uh, helping out as a volunteer uh, with the weekend school, um, um, more, mainly on the PTA activities, uh, traffic and, and the like. And then I became the, the uh, uh, PTA president about two years ago. Um, uh, for, you know, with, with the PTA, uh, when I first joined uh, the, the PTA, um, there are a lot of things that day-to-day -day activities that were running very smoothly and there was no reason to change them or you know, interfere with them. Um, uh, one thing was, a little thing was, you know, to, to add is just to start planning activities a little bit sooner, that's it. Uh, um, the other aspect when I joined the PTA, I'm a big advocate of that is what are the roles and responsibilities? When I hear PTA, I hear um, the first thing comes to my mind is site activities, social activities and the like. However, the PTA in the weekend school was involved in managing traffic, the daily uh, lunch, and those in my mind are more administrative for the school administration. So first thing is like, how can we get a better connection with the, with the, with the uh, weekend school um, committee 
uh, because the PTA is really taking on responsibilities that otherwise be part of that community. Um, and can we define those roles and responsibilities and make sure that those connections happen? Unfortunately, COVID started and the PTA kind of um, became um, less involved because of the remote learning, uh, but hopefully we'll be at some point get back to normal and, and go back to those activities. Uh, I am also currently on uh, a member of the Sarafa Committee under uh, Brother Omar uh, Tawil leadership. He's leading the Sarafa Committee. I am a member of that committee and we involved, I'm involved in a weekly uh, food pantry activities. Um, I'll stop it right here so I don't take a lot of time and hopefully we'll, we'll get a chance to do any questions if there is any. Uh, I see all of you so far have been on, are on various committees, uh, a lot of uh, work you already have on your shoulders, uh, mashallah. Uh, Brother Mohammed Siddiqui, please go ahead. I know you're another veteran with the ICJ. Uh, please uh, uh, go ahead and tell us something about yourselves and what you can do with I bring to ICJ. Is he here? I... Brother Mohammed Siddiqui, you're there? Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay. Uh, As-salamu alaykum to everybody. Um, again, my name is Muhammad Siddiqui. I have been associated with uh, this society from way in the past, from nine, actually even before the society was formed. When I was in the student at Rutgers University, some of the founding members of our society, Dawood Asad, Hussain Shahata, Shahata Rasool, Nabil Taha, they used to come. And I was a president of Rutgers uh, Muslim Association there. So they used to come and ask me to coordinate for their fundraising event and the running the classes for the kids, for the students. So since that time, I have been associated with the society. I, I was president twice with of society and I was treasurer and uh, secretary also for multiple times. So I'm, I'm a little old timer here. <laughs> Uh, the reason I'm coming uh, back, uh, I'm actually I'm a member also, the reason I would like to continue this, because I would like to make the society a little more proactive. Uh, what we have done, we have built a society and we expect people to come to us, um, which is not, not a bad idea. But if you look into the number of Muslims in this area in Mahanma Junction in South Brunswick, hardly less than 20% of Muslims probably are coming to our masjid. So I think if there is there is some scope to work in that area. I would like to be a little more proactive. I would like to uh, visit the Muslims here and find out what's the reason they are not coming, why their kids are not coming uh, to our society. So I would like to be a little bit proactive in that sense. Um, plus uh, the, the youth of our society, even though we have very smart um, youth in our society, I don't see them doing much. I think I would like to give some more um, freedom to youth and some more status to youth, some bring them to the position that they can also uh, do some proactive things. So these are my two goals. Uh, I'm current member of the uh, board of trustees and uh, uh, I would like to continue uh, if, if, if elected for another uh, three years terms uh, and concentrating on these two aspects uh, for our society. Uh, I'm very thankful to all the members of the society and all the board members for their cooperation. They have been an excellent, excellent community. And we have done quite a bit. We have done quite a bit, uh, particularly with this new expansion and the sports complex coming up. There is a lot of, lot of things I think we can come up. Once the sports complex is in full swing, we probably will be the, the best Muslim organization uh, in this area, in the metropolitan area. Uh, so we have a lot of scopes to work on that also. So um, th these are the th items in my mind that I would like to continue on this. And if anybody has any question, I'll be glad to answer. Yes, if anybody fair. would like to know my personal things, I think I have, um, I, um, many of you already know that. Um, uh, right now I'm retired. I was working with BNY Mellon and effective January I'm retired. Uh, I'm single, my, my wife who has been also uh, very actively involved in the society's uh, uh, activities, she passed away. Um, my, all my three kids are graduate from the weekend school. Uh, in fact, my grandson is a student in NUI now. Uh, so I was a board member of NUI also for some time. Um, so my, my whole family is related to uh, society and the society's activities. 
I'll be glad to answer any question any, anybody has. Thank you, Brother Mohammed. Uh, we'll, we'll have a question answer session um, once uh, we're done with the introduction and then uh, we'll take it from there. So, Brother uh, Siddiqui, uh, uh, please go ahead. Uh, um, you, you want me? I, I, Brother Mohammed, I I'm Mohammed, sorry, this. Brother Mohammed Ashraf, please go oh. ahead. My mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so last but not least, right? Yes, yes, not at <laughs> Yeah, when you get older, probably you can push around, right? <laughs> uh, well, before I uh, say anything about myself, I really feel happy uh, to see that at least some of the uh, younger uh, brothers have taken interest coming into the, uh, into the board. Uh, Brother Malaz and Brother Hatham, uh, listening to them, it's, it's a very, very encouraging that the experience that they have, uh, mashallah, will be very helpful to ISCJ. And uh, uh, people like me who have been, and Brother Muhammad Siddiqui, who have many, many years uh, took this load, uh, maybe get a little uh, breath uh, and do something else. Uh, but nonetheless, um, my association uh, goes pretty far too, not as much as his brother Muhammad Siddiqui, but uh, 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 my uh, eldest daughter, when she was a school age, we used to go to Rutgers uh, and uh, uh, Sophia, that was uh, the, 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 when the, we started with the, uh, with the ISCJ. And <clears throat> Then we moved to South Brunswick by, because my work was always in the Princeton area. So the two houses that we bought one after the other, me and my wife had the understanding that the house should be very close to ISCJ. So alhamdulillah, that, uh, that was very successful. Uh, both houses, the one after the other, were like one, one and a half miles from, uh, from the Masjid itself. Um, <clears throat> Career-wise, uh, I had been uh, at the two organizations that I have worked. Uh, one was the RCA, uh, which you have heard, that if, you had, if you own any radio or anything, RCA was the, the organization. And I joined, uh, uh, that was my first, uh, first position, uh, the, uh, the job that I had. And then <clears throat> uh, General Electric, bought out uh, RCA. And that was the first time that very large corporation was uh, bought by another corporation. Now, every, these days, everybody's buying, buying somebody else. But at that time, that merger or uh, that buyout was very, very strange. And obviously, uh, GE took over uh, RCA and they bifurcated. They sold piece by piece everything out of RCA and kept uh, whatever was good there. So alhamdulillah, it, uh, uh, I continued with, uh, with uh, General Electric and uh, that was one of the organization that had a, its own school or a college or a teaching institution in, uh, on, on the Hudson uh, in upper New York. Uh, and uh, every manager was supposed to go there and get a training there. And uh, apparently that this, this was a, very successful effort for, for General Electric or anybody who, uh, who was employed and has some uh, managerial position. They have to be there either for a week or 10 days or a month, depending on uh, what uh, type of need is there for the, for the individual, for the organization. And about eight, nine years ago, I decided to, uh, GE and myself decided to separate. And since that time, I, uh, Alhamdulillah, me and my wife are residing in South Brunswick. Um, I had uh, taken many positions uh, in ISCJ uh, and inshallah, I, I will continue, but my preference or at least my desire is that uh, those people who are younger than us uh, brothers and sisters, they should come forward and uh, uh, take this responsibility. Uh, we have, uh, this is the second time we have uh, another 
uh, opportunity to make ISCJ more exposed to the uh, to the community around Muslims and non-Muslims. The first one was when we had, uh, uh, of course, the Nuriman school construction. Uh, that was a, uh, a challenge to us, not only getting the approvals from the township, but the construction of the school itself. Uh, and that's the time that I realized that, uh, you know, when you put your heart together, uh, you, can do, you can do a lot of good things. And Alhamdulillah, uh, we collected about 11 to $12 million uh, to build that school. Uh, this, it, I, I've never heard that, that a, uh, a small town and a small society could, uh, uh, could do this in a couple of years to, to build a high school, which is a first class high school. I mean, look at the building, the, the, the equipment that we purchased, uh, and of course, now the education that uh, is uh, is being given to the kids, alhamdulillah, uh, that's that's a blessing that uh, our efforts came into a very successful uh, um, uh, conclusion. Now we have another opportunity that uh, we got the approval again, our teams, our, uh, our volunteers, uh, our experts, uh, paid or unpaid, mashallah, made a lot of uh, efforts to, to get the approval of the township. And now we have the approval and uh, all the expertise are needed. Doesn't matter what you do, whether you are a engineer or a, a financial person or a technical person, because these are needed now. Sports facility, and it's not we are not going to run it, but at least building it and working with the uh, with the developer uh, needs a lot of skills. The more we know about these things, uh, the more it will be better for us to to get this facility and that run on on a more professional manner. Uh, the same thing is the senior citizens' homes. Uh, obviously, some of us may be ending up there, uh, so we'd like to see that uh, those homes are not just brick and uh, mortar, but they have some life in there, okay? Uh, the, the furnishings, the, the way it should be done, uh, the plantings and uh, making it more comfortable for the individuals who are going to be uh, occupying them. So um, as I said before, if I end up uh, being in the board, I will continue inshallah the way I had been. Um, I had been, many times in different positions. So I don't want to count them and look like I may sound very old, <laughs> but uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm still here. Whether I go into the board or not, uh, oh yeah, on, on the other side, I have a, for almost 10, 15 years, I am involved with the South Brunswick uh, Public Library uh, on their board. Uh, and it just so happens that uh, Every year we are supposed to have a, a election like we have here. Uh, and uh, uh, we end up, uh, I become a president there as well in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the library as well. And that gives me a, a, a different perspective to see uh, how uh, non-Muslims work in our organization, how the meetings are done, uh, their uh, dedication to the, to be volunteer, uh, looking at the library when I, whenever I go there, uh, we have a lot of employees, but the encouraging part is that hundreds and hundreds of volunteers are there. Uh, and that, that's, uh, uh, for me, is a kind of transferring the, uh, the work ethics from one to the other. They all know uh, that I'm a Muslim, Islamic society is very much discussed uh, so often, uh, whether it's a approval for something, or we have a fundraising, or our Eid is coming, or our Ramadan is coming. So this is a good experience for me uh, to be a, 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 on a Muslim organization uh, versus a, uh, I shouldn't say non-Muslim, but at, at least a different kind of organization, which uh, obviously is uh, 
benefiting for Muslims and non-Muslims. And I see that uh, uh, work ethics are uh, very, very good there. Uh, and being there, uh, I have interaction with the mayor, uh, the council people. So it's, uh, it's, it's a life that uh, uh, I think the, uh, it gives me a satisfaction that I'm doing something good for the, for the community, inshallah. And I will continue, JazakAllah uh, khair, for listening. And uh, as I said again, uh, try to, uh, to vote for the younger people who are more experienced than us. JazakAllah khair, so I like. JazakAllah, brother, sir. For all the efforts you and other brothers have been doing for ICJ. Uh, I'm going to move on to the board of overseers. Uh, we have uh, two candidates, brother Mubashir Dar and brother Naeem. So, brother Mubashir, can you please uh, go ahead? Yes, Salaam Alaikum. Arif, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, Salaam Alaikum, everyone. Um, as Arif mentioned, I'm Mubashir Dar. Um, I've been part of ISCJ for now almost 14, 25 years. Uh, I became a member about 20 years ago when our kids um, joined the weekend. Yeah, we joined the weekend school and um, immediately my wife and I, uh, we started participating in the different activities at ISCJ. Uh, we fell in love with ISCJ right from the beginning when, you, when we moved to Central Jersey, 1998. Um, I got involved in the seminar committee and um, started helping brother back then, brother Hanafi, I think he was one of the founding members and, run, and helping him with the seminar. And over time, uh, my work was appreciated. And then I slowly replaced brother Hanafi and became uh, the chairman of the seminar committee. Uh, when I look back, um, you know, some of the seminars that we put together at ISCJ were just amazing. And some of the speakers uh, that we invited um, and some of the topics we covered, um, including women rights, medicine, civil rights, you name it, we've done them all and we inshallah will continue to do that. Um, and I work closely with my wife. Um, you know, she's also been very involved in ISCJ. I came onto the board of overseers first in 2013. I ran and I uh, was elected onto the board with Sister Azra Beg. So I'm familiar with the role and, and I am familiar also with the ISCJ constitution. And after my, my tenure ended as the board of overseer. You know, I continued with the seminar committee. My wife uh, took, uh, took on the role as a board of overseer and she was there for a few years. And of course I helped her. So <laughs> we're kind of a family that have been uh, at this position. Uh, then after my wife was done, um, I recruited uh, sister Sadiq, Sadiqa uh, to join uh, the board of overseers. And mashallah, she served that for a while. And being part of the seminar committee and then ISCJ, I've had the opportunity to work, I think closely with two uh, P, uh, organization. One is the PTA and I have worked closely with Brother Malaz as well since he became a president um, uh, in some of the programs uh, on, on Sunday. Um, um, the other organization we're closely with basically is our Imam. You know, he's <laughs> Imam Shibli. I've had the pleasure and opportunity to work very closely with Imam for almost now 25 years, uh, you know, hosting his thirst. Uh, we always uh, start with that. And then we have the second portion of the seminar where we invite mostly professionals. So it's been a pleasure uh, serving ICJ. I have two daughters, they both graduated through the weekend school and then they went on to become teachers in the weekend school. And now they are in college. Uh, one of them has actually graduated out of college. The other is in uh, junior year. And uh, so they have been involved in ICJ. In fact, when I look back, 
uh, one of the one of the most memorable, successful youth program done at ISCJ was uh, partly done by my daughter Amina and uh, Sister Khadija Makbul Qureshi's daughter. It was unfortunately a tragic event with the shooting of the mosque in the Christchurch, New Zealand. But my daughter and sister and Khadija Qureshi, the two youth. You know, they organized the uh, vigil at ISCJ where we brought the whole community together, including the police. Um, so that was a very good example of youth involvement. We are, you know, I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me the opportunity to continue serving this community. I am not young, I'm not old, I'm middle-aged. <laughs> and, um, and that's one of my dua, you know, that I make that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps me close to ISCJ as I'm older uh, and, and with this vibrant and diverse community uh, that we have that I continue to serve it. Professionally, um, I am a scientist like Brother Malaz is. Uh, I've been working in the biotechnology industry uh, he, work, he works with the clinical side. I've been working in, in the biotechnology side um, now uh, for about 25 years or so. So that's uh, my background. Thank you, Brother Bobashir. Uh, brother Naeem, uh, you go ahead, uh, please. Salam alaikum. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Warim Salam. Uh, I've been a member of the community for many years, having served on several different committees. Would we'll like to utilize my gained insight to contribute to the Board of Overseers. Uh, for example, use my legal, legal skills to ensure compliance with our internal rules. Uh, like I previously mentioned, was part of the Internal Audit Committee when it started. Later joined the Constitution Committee and the Endowment Committee. Have three children, age 15, 9, and 2. Thank you, Brother Naeem. Um, so um, let's uh, move on to the, yes, Imam, please go ahead. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. First of all, I make a dua to all the candidates, the ages, the middle age, and the youth. Uh, Two suggestions, inshallah ta'ala, to everybody, no name. Number one, for the candidate and for the volunteer, if they are selected in or not, not please, 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 three times, write down your history as a personal history with ISCJ or with any other Islamic organization, Mass and Care and uh, ICNA and ISNA, to let the other generation after us, they know who are we and what we did. Please, 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 I beg you on the air, on the town hall meeting, in Ramadan, don't let this history die with you. Please write it down, document it with a picture. This is what you achieved in America to be a da'iyah, not da'iyah with the turban and with jalabiya and with the beard and with the, you know, a stick. Da'iyah in your professional way, include the other two brothers who mentioned the brother Basr and Laz. They are scientific, mashallah, and may Allah reward them. Second suggestion, inshallah ta'ala, I will pick up on my president, brother Muhammad Ashraf, the one who said, Please vote for the youngest one. Inshallah, if you vote for them or not, that is your position. But my request, the second request, if every one of you, as my request, every one of you adopt the three youth from today, before the Eid, and start training them, as Brother Abbas said, I need people to train them to know how do, do, to do their tax. And I will admit myself, if Brother Abbas accepted me to be his student, to know how can I write my check in the computer, 
How can I write my bill? How can I understand my tax? Please, if you do that, training the other, and may Allah reward you, and I will say Jazakumullah khair, may Allah make a very successful meeting and reward you and make it your hasanat, you and your family. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, so now we'll move into the questions um, phase. Uh, we have uh, um, some questions to ask from the board. What I would ask is, or from the candidates, I would ask, um, um, since we have uh, six, uh, eight candidates, uh, maybe we can ask a couple of them to raise their hands and we'll have them uh, uh, answer the questions. Uh, one of the first question is, um, the masjid has gone, um, alhamdulillah, expansion and there are other expansion going on in this uh, 16 acre land. Obviously with all this, there's increased cost, maintenance cost, um, wear and tear cost. Um, how does the board uh, look or whoever is on the board, how will you look into generating revenue to fill this gap um, because the cost is not going to stop. It's going to be increasing, not just uh, inflation and everything else. Uh, so who would like to take the questions? And uh, please keep your reply, you know, really short, maybe one, one or two minutes. Uh, Brother Ashraf, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I think this, uh, uh, this is an issue that uh, is all along uh, with the, any nonprofit organization, not only a Muslim or a non-Muslim, uh, where uh, money has to be collected from uh, different sources. Uh, ISCJ is in a position that uh, cannot go and collect the money from uh, other faiths uh, for use in uh, ISCJ, but rely on uh, its own uh, uh, congregants are uh, people who are Muslims around. Uh, I think uh, with this, these two events, uh, not two events, but the two uh, facilities that we are going to build, uh, inshallah, uh, that was the purpose that it's uh, when the sports facility is, is built, it will have two functions. One is that it will improve the uh, physical, physical health of the of our children. And the second one is that whoever runs it uh, will be giving money to ISCJ. And uh, alhamdulillah, the, the way we are very close to uh, signing the lease and uh, uh, the, the fees that will be the, the owner or the, the person who will be running will be paying to ISCJ is not whole last cost, not take the whole expenses of ISCJ, but it will be a reasonable uh, benefit to, uh, uh, to ISCJ. Uh, it will re reduce the dependence on, uh, on, on the congregants. And the second one, of course, is the senior citizen home. If it's uh, um, built to fill capacity and uh, there's a model that we will get some money out of this every year. Uh, these two event, these are two facilities are uh, definitely will help uh, ISCJ financially. And of course, uh, the third one is the, the more people come into the become members uh, uh, that helps to get the revenue and the donations, inshallah. And now if you look at the masjid, if anyone of you who uh, has gone to the masjid, if you send sit in the old uh, MPR uh, and the Imam is standing very far. Uh, you have to have good glasses or binoculars to see where he is, mashallah. Yeah. So that, uh, that gives us the, uh, the opportunity to accommodate more people, more schools, more uh, 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 programming there. Uh, I, I think we need a lot of participants uh, and inshallah, uh, things will go in the right direction and uh, uh, the people will keep on uh, donating money uh, and uh, not only just for the construction or uh, the operation, but now we have an endowment fund and we hope inshallah that as the endowment uh, uh, increases and goes to a level of one, two, three million dollars, uh, that will be another benefit to, uh, to the ISCA. And thank you very much. Yeah, brother Shea Abbas, go ahead. Uh, 
assalamu alaikum uh, you ask the obvious question and we inside the board they have the obvious answers uh, brother ashraf has covered everything uh, that's the reason the board has adopted uh, to generate the income so that we don't have to rely and that's why the sports complex we are talking about senior citizen but i'm not going to talk about and taking time brother ashraf has covered those things uh, including the endowment which we have a plan to raise the 10 million dollars and generate income and we can become a self sufficient but in our corporation we know that uh, to sustain the business what are the two things they are looking for the two things is increase the revenue decrease the cost that's the name of the game in the business and we have to look at that thing in iscg also so first is increase the revenue how we can increase the revenue besides that we are talking about the sports complex but i am just talking about the average thing that uh, the membership unfortunate part that membership there are many masajids are coming so the membership is decreasing but i think any new board member comes they have to concentrate or they have to come up with some ideas that how we can bring more people like brother siddiqui said i want to bring more people there are people living they don't come into the masjid uh, so that is one of the things of course uh, general do donation means any kind of a donation you bring that can also to run the masjid uh, our community is generous and everything but we have to concentrate that thing and second part of this thing cutting the cost uh, we should not do any fuzul expenses uh, and we in the iscj board we always monitor the thing and that is the main thing in the pandemic year also we were able to survive because we did not spend any kind of unnecessary things uh, we look at every cost every things we discussed and everything so these are the two things i would definitely answer to your question that try to increase the revenue whoever come to the board and decrease the cost that's my answer okay thank you yeah bro sidiki go ahead yeah um see depending on number of members should not be the only criteria the reason being lot of new organizations are coming lot of new masjid are coming the number of members are getting split now now if you if you go from from east brunswick to princeton at least uh, five more new organization have come up uh, so that, that's important criteria but that should not be the only criteria for generating income we have to think out of the box how we can invest the money in other areas to generate this income and so we have to think that way also um now with this um, exp um, um sports complex is a very good opportunity for us we can really think over and make that as a permanent money generating tool uh, so that we don't remember uh, depend too much on the, our membership membership is a very important no doubt about that but you cannot create people the people are getting split up into many organizations you know half of my friends are not there in iscg anymore they have gone to lawrenceville they have gone to princeton they have gone to other masajid uh, really we cannot do too much on that so we have to think out of the box and do some real investment to generate the money for us uh, thank you um, i have a question from uh, wafa i'm going to ask it on mute and ask you uh, your question Yeah, Wafa, you there? If you can hear me, uh, you can unmute and ask ask your question. Unmute. Okay. Hello. Okay. Yes, go ahead. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, my phone freeze and I keep pressing un un unmute and it's not going through. Are you Are you listening to me? Yeah, we can hear Hello? you. Go ahead. Yes, we can hear you. All go right. ahead with the question. Uh, it's not a question. It's just uh, sharing some concerns. everybody is mashallah the buy for everybody is very very professional and uh, uh, i'm a real estate agent and i used to be in the teaching field before becoming a real estate agent uh, we need to know exactly what we could do for our youngster starting from higher elementary to high school 
to attract them to the mosque. Uh, from my experience as a teacher, uh, the teaching field now is trying to make even homework. They're giving them a time in the day to do whatever's left from the homework. And if they don't do during class, they do it before the end of the day or the end of the week. So when they come home, they have nothing to do except thinking about activities and fun. And we need to cover that because this is where they, sh they go to their other direction that we don't want. Uh, uh, and I think we need more volunteer or more organized uh, goal setting uh, activities, even with membership or money to attract this and to fill up the gap for our youngster. Also, uh, 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 go ahead. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is a question, uh, what you're exactly saying, uh, we have for the candidates, exactly what you're talking about, how to bring in the youth into the, into the masjid and into the organization. So, yes. so I'm going to ask the, the members, uh, you know, the candidates to answer this question, but let me first uh, move on to the next uh, uh, person to ask their question, Brother Makti. Unmute yourself, brother. Yeah, brother Magdi, unmute. So uh, here's the question for uh, uh, the candidates. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of youths. Uh, you know, we have people from different generations. We have a lot of youths. We need to bring them uh, closer to the organization, not just you know inside the masjid, but all the activities, so that they they can carry on whatever work you're doing. So I'm going to ask, you know, maybe three of you um, uh, to talk about what uh, value, what do you bring or what can you bring to increase the youth to come to the uh, to ICJ, spend time there, because I know there was a vision that they should come there, spend a lot of time there, interact with others and, you know, um, learn Islam and also make it uh, um, entertaining, exciting for them to be there. Uh, who will take that question first? Uh, um, let's uh, let's get an answer from uh, one of the persons who not served on the board. Uh, I think Brother Hatim will be good yes, to do the Brother answer. Hatim, please go Brother Malaz, raise the hand first. And okay. Brother Malaz also. <laughs> okay, so uh, Brother Malaz, you raise hand first. Go ahead, please. Sure. So, um, so I, I think they're all um, interconnected. I mean, um, a lot of our youth, I mean, I have a 13-year-old daughter, and uh, she's been in in the uh, Qawari program and a lot of the other lit, uh, programs that have been um, created by, by ICJ. And she loves his family speech. Where is he before? I mean, it's- it, I, will, I will unmute those, uh, Brother those are Those are the activities that makes her wanna be part of um, the, the ICJ. So those are social activities and along the way they learned a lot from them. Um, and they hopefully at some point they start generating money for ICJ. So I think it's connected by saying, what are the activities that those kids do if there was no ICJ? They're going to be doing sports. They're going to be doing after school programs. They're going to be, and parents are going to be paying for those and volunteering for those. Can we, instead of them going outside, have them be part of those activities, generate those services at ICJ, have them competitive and a really high quality that those kids want to be part of the ISCJ and, and have friends that are Muslim in the community. Um, the other aspect, and, and I see it a lot with the teachers and the younger volunteers that come in for the weekend school and for the um, um, food pantry, um, a lot of those kids, 16, 17 year olds are motivated, uh, but they feel that they are not getting the freedom to operate. Um, and I think we're very protective that we don't want them to fail, that we're not letting them operate. And, and I think having them lead it, let them, and you'll see a lot more involvement from those uh, youth when you let them lead the activity, create it, lead it with some supervision, but it's okay if there are some um, learnings along the way from those kids. So I, I think those are the, the, the things that, if you let the kids, let them take the initiative, let them lead it, let them be part of it, and also think about what are the activities that otherwise they would be doing outside of ISCJ? Can we bring those in and it become part of the ISCJ? That makes the youth more involved and hopefully also help with the, with the, 
with the getting more income for the community. Yeah, Malas, you said something very important. Uh, activities they do outside ICJ bring them inside ICJ because uh, uh, they won't still want to keep doing those activities. Brother Hatim, uh, I know you're also doing a lot here. Please go ahead. There's like a lot here. So I couldn't agree more with uh, Brother Malas, that's for sure. Um, um, but as I mentioned at the very beginning, relevance is key. Right. Um, if you bring the kids or if, if all we're offering is just a lecture or so, the, you lose them. Absolutely. Um, but you want to have something that is consistent, that they are part of. Right. Um, and it has to be um, a safe space for them. Uh, one of the things that we tried many times um, at, at late is when you create the safe space, no parent zone kind of deal. That's what we call one of the programs. Right. Um, they will come, the youth will come, um, and uh, they'll open up uh, and they'll speak about the real issues that they have. Um, I'm sure Dr. Ahmed can give you loads of stories about that. When, when you create a no parent zone, they'll come, they'll open up. Um, but, but there's got to be a rapport established first. You got to that, that trust between them and the masjid and the person that they're speaking to, um, that they know that that person's not going to whatever leak, whatever information they tell them to their parents or others, right? Um, so, so relevant programs are very key. Things that they are interested in. And, we, and there are so many ideas at Click that we came up with um, that, you know, if, if, you know if, if these are active and established, then um, you, you'll see consistency, inshallah, inshallah uh, you know, for, for the youth. But the other thing is anything that involves activity. And that's why, um, so Sri Patat and I, we, we go way, way, way back and we share this passion for, you know, activism and sports. And, you know, we talk about it, you know, all the, all the time. And we even, um, uh, when, when we go, for example, to train uh, the NEI players, right? The high schoolers, um, the NEI school team, um, and we do, you know, uh, like off, um, uh, you know, activities or, or games that would engage other, um, you know, um, older NUI or alums who can come play. They come in loads. I mean, you'll see 40, 50, 60 people. Um, when we established the skiing trip, which is something very relevant to the youth, right? When you get that activism uh, involved, you get 50, 75 people. Same thing with the skating trip. Um, anything that involves activity, you'll get a lot of people. But the, the key here is the relevance of the program to the youth, right? And the consistency um, and having the right people running the program, right? Um, so, and establishing this relationship with the youth. Um, but the key, as Brother Mass said, that they have to be engaged, they have to be part of it. They have to lead it. Very good example. If you look at one of the lead programs, Kafila program, for example, um, you know, read a book uh, that Sister Mariam is is leading. So all these things, you got a, a whole lot of people um, coming consistently, uh, but they have to love it. They have to like it. It cannot be a lecture type, um, you know, because you lose your 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 the, the, their focus. So um, one relevance. Um, two, you have to, you absolutely must involve activism. If we don't have the facility now, so be it. We can go ahead and rent. Um, what we did before is rented the Y for the whole day. It was swimming aquatics for the sisters, right? So locked it down. Only sisters come to the Y. We rented the whole thing for a couple of days and you got a couple of hundred sisters to come at least, right? So again, um, there are so many things that we can do and you can, you know, as, as with any other board, you know, you can do a gazillion things, but if you don't have the money, you're not going to do any of that, right? So the, the number one challenge is going to be budget. So you absolutely must focus on revenue generating projects. So even if it's projects that, um, you know, the, or even activities that you do today, right? You can add just a little bit to that to make it just revenue generating uh, program. But every committee and every single member must think about, um, let's not just focus everything on donation, 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 right? 
you know, what could be some of the things that we can do that would be revenue generating, partnering with restaurants, partnering with other um, centers, um, creating leagues, right? Forming leagues that our youth can be engaged in. You know, I bet you if you, inform, if, if you form leagues and you say, I need five basketball teams to be formed and create a league and make it um, uh, competitive and, um, and you make it appealing for the youth, they'll come forward, they'll stick around, they'll come to the message consistently. So things like that. Can I also respond, Brother Arif? Um, we are running short of time. So uh, what I would suggest, maybe just put in the chat because I have uh, on the line uh, with the Mufti, uh, if you don't mind. Okay. And the Imam also. Uh, Brother Mufti, you there? Yes, Salaam Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Go ahead. We can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Sata, Sama, Rasulullah. My question, inshallah, Ta'ala, this is Magdi, uh, Magdi Haggag. I'm the current chairman of the Board of Trustees. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I know enough uh, about the, the candidate who already in the Board of Trustees. So I pray to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to give them long life and continue to service our community. My question is more to the new board members or, or who will be uh, uh, coming to the board new especially Brother Malaz and Brother Hatim. Um, being in the Board of Trustees is more uh, like a marathon to me and not sprint. Um, can you give us your understanding of the time commitment and the activity commitment that takes place on the board and can you sustain it? Jazakumullah khair. So um, I know uh, people who are already on the board, Brother Shraf and Brother Siddiqui, you know, and Brother Bas, you already know that. Let me uh, pose this to, you know, Brother Obashir, uh, Atim, you know, and others who are going to join the board, who are not already on the board. You want to answer that? Yeah, and that's what I said, Brother. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, I said this is for My the bad. new board members, board. especially yeah. Brother Hatim and Brother Malaz. I know yeah, also yeah. Brother Mubashir has been yeah, on the board. Yeah, on the board. Before. I agree. Yeah. Brother so, Hatim, go ahead, please. We also need to be mind of the time also. Yes. So short time, so be good. Sure. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Cool. Um, so it is a time commitment. I was um, at, at the very beginning, I think when, when you brother Arif was giving a general overview and you said, you know, overall, it's just one meeting a month and all that. I was like, there's no way it's one meeting a month. There, it, it is never one meeting a month, right? So maybe one official meeting a month. Yes, yeah. I get that. But um, there'll be a lot of times in order for you to, to get buy-in um, on a specific topic, you'll have a number of side discussions. It could be one-on-one -on -one with each and every board member, right? That will be time. And it will be in order for you to kind of sell your idea um, you have to rally the community, obviously. So you'd have to have these side discussions with the community, right? With the, with, with the society to one, get their feedback and, and, and understand whether the idea that you're trying to, to circulate would make sense or not, would, would have any traction, it doesn't have any holes. Um, it's something that the community really needs because you can have a great idea, but the community, you know, is not interested. So the point I'm trying to make is, um, this is, this is a time commitment, and that's why I declined this before, because I didn't have that time. But from, you know, I'm, I'm currently on four boards, and I know exactly that this is a serious time commitment. Um, it, would be, it, it, would be, it would definitely be no less than 15, 20 hours, um, in some cases, a week. Um, and uh, there'll be some homework that you need to do before or prior every meeting. Uh, depending on what you're doing on the board, um, you know, there, there, there would be a lot of tactical work following up. Like I can just imagine, you know, Ashraf Uncle, for example, um, since he's the president, then every employee reports to him. So he's got to have one-on-ones with these people um, or with the employees and follow up with them and track and, and so on and so forth. So it is definitely a time commitment. It is not a one meeting a month and it's not just a couple of hours a week. It's not going to be like that. And in many cases that we've seen, that if you have an issue, sometimes you stay on the phone for six or seven hours trying to resolve that. Um, we had calls starting at 9 p.m. and ending at two o'clock in the morning trying to work out, and that would be two, three, four days in a row, trying to work out 
um, certain issues. So it, it, it is understood that it is a time commitment. Um, you know, from previous experience, if things are going okay and everything is just BAU or business as usual, then, you know, you put 10 hours a week or so, but, you know, there'll be other times where it requires definitely more than that. Uh, well, Laura. So, so I, I'm not gonna be, uh, belabor the, the the point much, but yeah, I I've obviously understood it's gonna be many many hours on a weekly basis and consistent basis. Uh, that that is not um, you know um, it's not hidden. It's this is ab obvious commitment. It um, it's something that I sat down very seriously with my wife before I accepted the nomination. Um, we discussed it significantly and um, knowing that I'm going to have to rely on her a lot for stuff that I'm currently doing uh, around the house and uh, and and she's 100% supportive for that. So uh, it's something that we, we kind of thought about seriously, we agreed to, to do and we're willing to commit. Um, the other aspect to it is uh, hopefully that will make me more be in the message and, and do a lot of things as, as Brother Hatim said. A lot of the meetings are not going to be a formal meetings. Uh, it's going to be the, the conversations, and, and hopefully a lot of those happen while being in the messages with others, and um, and and we can make it as a family event if it, when when we get back to the message. So uh, it, to me, in 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 my mind, it is a significant commitment. It's something that my wife and I sat down and discussed actively, and we are consciously willing to do that commitment. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Brandeim, you're there? We'll get back to him. Um, Imam, I know you raised your hand. Uh, what I would like to do is um, um, just ask uh, uh, every candidate um, um, or 30 seconds, um, what is the most important thing you will bring to the board? Within, in 30 seconds, please reply. And then we'll go to the Imam. He has raised his hand for a question. So I'm going to start. Uh, in alphabetic order again, I said you go ahead. Uh, Thirty seconds. Uh, what is the most important thing you see you bring to the board and ICJ? Probably it should be a one-word answer. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, I guess the most important thing I bring to the board is that I have experience with different um, uh, communities, and I have worked with a lot of people, and you know, the teamwork that we. Too, I think is the best thing. And that's what I guess I bring to the board. Brother Bas, please go ahead. I think your brother Bas is on mute. Yes, go ahead, Brother Bas. Yara, we cannot hear you. Yes, please unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Brother Arif, I had to just walk outside. No problem. Uh, some uh, doorbell rang, so I didn't hear the question. The question was in 30 seconds. Uh, please let us know what is the most important, uh, I would say, issue or task uh, you will uh, um, look at at the board, you will bring to the board or ICJ. A 30 second reply, the most important thing you feel right now. I think. Uh, I would uh, involve in some kind of a cost uh, benefit analysis for uh, infrastructure, school and uh, senior housing. That will be the assets I will provide to them. Thank you. Uh, Brother Hatim. I, I know it's difficult, it's not a 30 second reply, bless. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'll try to be uh, uh, quick inshallah. So I think, you know, as everyone knows, I mean, youth is to, to me a key, right? So how can we make it, um, how can make the, the, the center youth appealing and youth centric, right? To come for the youth to come on a consistent basis. So that would be number one. Number two, rigor to the processes that we have now. And by rigor means, um, you know, training, absolutely. So I mentioned that I sit on one of the board of trustee, uh, or the organization board of trustees, which is Oak Tree Institute. This is probably one of the single um, organization that is focused on training non-for-profit organizations, specifically how to run committees, how to sit in, how, how to run the board, how to be efficient and all these things. So rigor to the processes. Last but not least, committee integration. 
because a number of our committees run in silos and we've seen the power when we integrate it lit with the Quran Academy and it should be the weekend school. So this committee integrations and feeding off of each other is gonna be key. So that's basically the focus or that would be my focus in Shalom. Brother Malaz, please go ahead. Um, so before I, I, I answer the question, and hopefully I'll still keep within 30 seconds. This is not me saying I'll do it better than, better than anybody else. I mean, when I first saw the, the nominees and I saw that Brother Muhammad Ashraf was rerunning, I thought I, if I knew that he was rerunning, I would not have run for it. So this is not me saying I'm better than anybody else. I have full respect for all of the other nominees. Uh, but what I would say is um, get the right people, the, the operational efficiency. Um, this make the board responsible for the vision, the, the direction, uh, get the right people on the committees, and then get out, get out of their way and let them do their job. And, and I think if we can achieve that, have the right people in place, um, agree with them on what the direction, the boundaries, the operating boundaries with which they can operate, the vision and the objective of those committees, and then get out of their way and let them do their work. And I think that will be kind of more of an operational efficiency that we can bring into the, to the society. Brother Mohamed, uh, please go ahead. Mohamed Siddiqui? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I think um, Allah has given us a golden opportunity now. We have the approval of building uh, the tw 25 houses there in the back. We have the approval of building the sports complex. So we can really work on this and make it like a self-generating um, for our society. We, we really don't need to, of course, memberships are very important thing for us, but we really don't need to go for fundraising and asking people to give, donate and donate, donate. We can make ourselves self-sufficient by because we have been given the approval to make the housing in the back and the, and the sports complex in the front. And these two tools are very important tool for us to actually make it a fund gener a revenue generating income for us for a longer, longer time. And of course, the membership, of course, we will have to concentrate on members to continue as we have been doing it all along. If you are on mute, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> brother, Ashraf, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Just, uh, uh, I think all the good ideas have already been uh, said, yeah. but I will uh, add my part. I, I think the two facilities will be done, inshallah, now that we have the approval. But I am noticing that our weekend school is, I want to make the weekend school like a regular school not changing the hours, but bringing some good paid uh, trained teachers. I, I see right now that we don't have uh, all of them, uh, you know, with the, with the uh, knowledge that can be transmitted to the students. So I think that we, we should look into that one because that is the basis of the children uh, to get education uh, in, in, in few hours that they have. The second one is our lit program I want to make that into a, a knowledge uh, a, a, a source also where uh, we can bring big speakers and you know good knowledgeable people uh, in addition to our own imams and uh, mashallah they are doing good jobs but this is this is my my uh, looking in the future that we should make a, a literally our organization more uh, uh, benefiting to the community inshallah that's it. Brother Mubashir, can you please go ahead? I think if there's one word that, uh, I, that I think is important is cooperation. Um, we need to continue to see cooperation among the different uh, committees. And I'm going to make sure that uh, we work together and work in harmony and are in line uh, with uh, the vision and constitution of ISCJ. Thank you. Renaim, you're there? Can you yes, I am. Yes, I mean, as it relates to the Board of Overseers, I would stay independent and impartiality as it relates to performing the duties. Thank you. Exactly, thank you. Uh, Imam, uh, I know you had raised your hand. Uh, please go ahead and ask your question. 
I did not raise my hand. I just <laughs> pushed to speak, you know. Okay. Uh, first of all, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum uh, Number one, we are missing the female gender in the whole, uh, you know, uh, town hall from A to Z. I don't know why. Please Excellent observation, them. Imam. Except okay, for Imam. Atiyah. <laughs> you got to say Atiyah. <laughs> okay. I did not hear any sister say anything. Sorry for that. I'm, I'm speaking on their behalf. Number two, with all the respect for all the maybe one one and an hour hour meeting, I did not hear any one of the brothers maybe focus about the word da'wa. Da'wa, which means we have to increase our Islamic knowledge. We have to uh, teach and preach Muslim and non-Muslim. Uh, not only the Friday khutbah or the seminar, Brother Mubashir talk about it. The word da'wah, we, one of the purpose of Islam to be da'ya, yeah, the job of the Imam Shibli, Imam Ahad Muhammad, Imam uh, Ashur, but they have some other activity to do, you know, the youth and the Quranic Academy. Can we, from the whole body, either have a budget or no without budget to say, let us focus about committee, to teach and preach a da'wah either online or maybe on Zooming or going back again to the masjid with the same distance, inshallah ta'ala. And finally, this number three, a group of youth from South Brunswick High School, they sit there, they approach the imam, they try to meet with the board of trustees and to meet with Dr. Ahmed Muhammad to do something, I hope because the corona is here, Maybe after Corona is over, or maybe after Eid, this group from high school, they can come to the brother, brother Muhammad Ashraf or to Dr. Ahmed Muhammad as the youth director and sit down with him, uh, sit down with them and see what they can do to our youth on behalf of South Brunswick High School, inshallah. Those are the three points. The female get involved, da'wah, we have to work on it. And thirdly, welcome those youth from the high school, which is khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, brother Abbas, you had raised your hand. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, brother uh, Hamad Shibli's comment uh, uh, we have three board members as a lady, a female in our board. Alhamdulillah, that's a very good representation. Uh, of course, today, not that many sisters are coming. So answer to the second point that uh, Dawa, I just want to mention that thing that uh, under uh, our current uh, brother Sharif Batat, uh, he started last year uh, before pandemic, it was in February actually, that we want to invite scholar people from all over the United States giving the presentation involving uh, youth uh, as well as current members about talking about Islam and everything. And we put the budget of also $35,000 to spend the money. Unfortunately, this uh, pandemic situation came and we were just in the beginning and in the month of Ramadan, we used that Soeb web uh, for some kind of thing. Uh, and after that, it died down, but inshallah, as soon as the pandemic over, uh, so we we are uh, mindful of that activity. I just remember, so I just want to mention that thing. Yeah, thank you, Brother Bas. Um, we were uh, our time to close this was twelve. We all we have passed twelve. So what I would like to do is just uh, um, uh, before we close, just say a couple of things about uh, the border overseers. We are conducting this elections and this. Uh, I uh, get to know candidates meeting. Um, we, I'm the chief uh, board overseers. I have brother Muhammad Ashik. Uh, can you please raise your hand, brother Ashik? He's going to be the next chief overseer uh, after the election takes place. And brother Said, you can raise your hand, please. He's also the board of overseers. Uh, for your information, uh, this time you'll soon be receiving letters uh, in the mail. Uh, the election is going to be online voting. So you will get uh, a paper which has the voting link with unique ID. Um, you, depending on the, whether you have, have one or two voting members in the family and you're going to vote online. So this is something um, with the help of brother Ashik, uh, he set it up and it made it easier for us. Uh, so 
please, once you get that uh, uh, letter, you can go ahead and cast your vote. We'll most probably open the voting on May 1st. Um, I would like to close this meeting and ask uh, Imam to make a dua. And uh, please um, uh, remember everybody else in your duas. Brother Im uh, Imam, please, can you please? Uh Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Salatu wa Salaamu wa Ala Ashraf al-Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa Ala Alihi wa Sahbihi, wa Man Sara Ala Hadihi ila Yawm al-Deen, wa Qala Rabbukum Ad'uni As-Sajib Lakum, Rabbana Aatina Fi Dunya Hasana, wa Fi Al-Akhirat Hasana, wa Qina Adab Al-Nara, Allahumma Ya Rabbana Taqabbal Minna Hada Al-Jam, Allahumma Ya Rabbana Taqabbal Minna Hada Al-Ishtima'a, اللهم يا ربنا بارك لنا فيما عطيتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم يا ربنا قارب بيننا وبين الخير وباعد بيننا وبين الشر وقارب بيننا وبين الجنة وباعد بيننا وبين النار برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا ربنا إن كنا قد أحسنا فزد في أحساننا وإن كنا أسأنا فتجاوز عن إساءتنا وعن تقصيرنا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. May I request all the brothers and the sister one more time before we uh, finish the meeting. Sunnah is to recite Surah Al-Asr with the intention to meet each other either in the Salah or in a meeting or in the day of the election or in this dunya or in the Akhirah with the Prophet, with the Messenger, with the Martyr, with all the good believer, with the mercy of Allah in Ramadan in the Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani r-rajim, bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim, wal-as, inna al-insana lafi khus, illa al-lazina amanu, wa'amilu al-salihat, wa tawasaw bil-haq, wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Sadaq Allahu al-azim, wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi, rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair. Wa iyaakum, inshallah ta'ala, brother Abbas. Wa alaykum, inshallah. Wa alaykum, inshallah. Wa alaykum, inshallah. Wa alaykum, inshallah. Wa alaykum, inshallah.